Okay, guys, welcome one more time to special call. This time we have uh, Anthony Confrancesco, right? Perfect. <laughs> uh, our friend from Pickful uh, Company, who have amazing tool to help us to optimize our content and also to do a split testing, what is really useful for even if you are preparing to launch your product and you cannot decide which which type of branding you like to to choose for your for your products and etc. So Anthony, you can tell us more about yourself first, your beginnings in e-commerce or Amazon, because I know that you have a background in Amazon as an Amazon seller. So tell us about something about yourself. Yeah, sure. So hey everybody, it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Anthony Cofrancesco. I've been in the e-commerce space for about four years now. I started off my career uh, working for Amazon in fulfillment center operations. And so I worked uh, in Houston and also Tampa, a lot of cases with vendor fraud and internal employee theft, different things like that. So I kind of got to see how Amazon ran from behind the scenes. Um, after working there for about a year, I quit my job and moved out to the Philippines to help scale a creative agency. Uh, we grew that team to more than 30 full-time employees. And then I exited that business in 2019. And since then, I've been working for PicFu as their industry liaison. So I do um, a lot of work with our larger level clients to help consult in terms of uh, how they can be using PicFu and integrate with creative teams. So today, I'm going to be giving just a really quick rundown of what PicFu is, some of the most common use case applications. And yeah, that's and it'll be relevant for, for everyone, whether you're just starting off selling or you've been selling for quite a while. It's really useful that you as an Amazon seller can share some some experience with this, how you see this. As, as I didn't know for these people, I told you that some of my friends recommend me this tool. And then after a few days, you you reach out to me with email. So it was <laughs> so funny. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And be with us, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. And you've probably been hearing a lot about PicFu, uh, but it, it really does work. And, I'm, and I think you're going to probably see I, I know that the big companies like Tra uh, Tracio, right? It's And all the big guys are using, using your... your I heard that first time from guys from MSD Group. You know, for them. Yep. Yep. I do. My, yeah. my friends, it's one of the biggest sellers in e-commerce in Amazon. So when we spoke in our private meeting, they 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 spoke about PicFu. So awesome. Yeah, you can you can start your presentation and share us how it works. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'm going to share my screen and and get started here. This is what I call how to validate with PicFu. So kind of the most common use case applications. Um, what I'm going to cover today are the most basic use cases of PicFu. So things like using PicFu to help determine your product design, your branding, your copy, and your images. Um, there's some more advanced multi-step functions like using PicFu for optimizing A-plus content, video, storefront design, and more advanced branding. But I'm, I'm going to try to keep this pretty short, about 15 minutes. And maybe later, I can come back and, and walk through some of the more advanced applications. Um, I do want to mention though, if if this is your first time using PicFu, um, we don't really give out discount codes, but we do have a special one uh, just for this audience. So you can see that code up there on the screen, and that'll actually give you fifty percent off of your first poll. So you know, treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. I recommend using it. Yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing too that I'll say is my only job here at PicFu. I'm very fortunate. My only job is to help do outreach and help with uh, new customers and things like that. So if anyone has any questions, or maybe you want me to take a look at your listing. I've got a lot of experience in it. Feel free to hit me up, Anthony at pickfood.com. I don't think enough people actually take advantage of that, but I'd recommend doing it. I, I can be pretty helpful. Um, okay, so let's jump into the meat and potatoes of the presentation, kind of what is PicFu. And basically what we try to say is uh, PicFu is instant consumer feedback. So what it allows you to do is it's a platform that you can take your idea, whether it's an idea for logo, branding, product packaging, uh, and you can take that idea, show it to our panel of more than 10,000 people. They're all real. They're based in the United States. And you can get ideas and feedback on your ideas very, very quickly. Um, and so what I do when I'm talking to a lot of sellers is I go to them and I say, OK, where are you currently going to get feedback? Right when you're when you're working on something in your business, and the most common thing I hear is people going to their family. So they go to their partner or their spouse, and they're like, "Hey, babe, like, what do you think about my product packaging?" 
Um, another really common one is people say, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I just go with my gut. I know what it, I know what's good and that's how they decide. And then the last group is people going and asking their friends or maybe they're at the coffee shop, they tap on the persons in front of them and they say, hey, what do you think about this logo? The thing is, there's nothing wrong with any of these methods, right? Going with your family, going with your gut, asking friends. It's just that the feedback you're getting, it's very possible that this is that the feedback isn't right. Uh, or that it might lead you, it might be biased, it might not give you the best insights you need for your business. And so the thing is, like market research is nothing new. Picture certainly did not invent market research. But typically, uh, when this is done by larger companies, uh, it's very, very expensive. And so if you think about like the Nike, the Under Armour, the large brands, they're spending on average about forty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars US per product just on market research. And it kind of makes sense as to why, right? If they're investing a bunch of time and effort and resources into launching a product, they want to make sure that when they take it to market, it's not going to fail, right? That it's going to do well, it's going to be well received. And so what I like to equate it to is think about all of the different cost drivers you have in your business, right? You've got your, your inspections, you've got your cost of goods, you've got uh, your 3PL, your fulfillment fees. You probably wouldn't go and say, hey, I know Amazon is charging me fulfillment fees, but let me go and try to ship it myself and not do Prime. You know, you're probably going to actually do things the right way. And so I think a lot of times when it comes to creative things for sellers, they're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in other parts of my business. But when it comes to getting really good creative, they're just going to you know, go and do the cheapest option. And, and that's really not what we see in terms of sellers being successful. So today, what I'm going to walk you through are the most common use cases of pick through. Generally, I'm going to walk through each of these, like product design, packaging, main images, branding, etc. Um, generally, we're seeing people are running on average about four to seven tests per product. Um, a few really important things to know about PixFu. Number one is that you can pick targeted audiences. So we've got a bunch of different categorizations of so things like gender, age range, income, ethnicity. You can say, hey, I want to target a group of uh, shoppers that own a dog or that are wine drinkers or that have a high exercise frequency. So if you know a lot about your target market, or a lot of us who are selling, I know I personally sell products where I am dramatically different from the target market, right? I'm selling into a market that I have no idea about. And so that's where PicSoup can be very helpful is getting insights from a target market that's very different from your own perspective. The other really big advantage about PicSoup is that it's really fast. So if you put up a poll, you're going to start getting feedback immediately and you might get a finished result in 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and so this allows you to go through a lot of testing in a very short time frame, which is really good for creative iterations. Uh, the last thing, which I think is probably the biggest benefit of PicFu is people aren't just voting. I like option A versus B. They're actually giving you detailed feedback as to why they chose that. And that's really where I say the magic happens because you go through those responses and you start to get ideas that you hadn't previously had. The other thing I want to mention is that PicFu is 100% private. So everyone on the panel is bound by a really strict non-disclosure agreement. So all of the... And I, I like to say that because I'm going to show a bunch of examples. All the examples I'm about to show you, we have permission to share or they were run by our own team. So I know every seller is very tightly guarded and not wanting their product ideas to get out. But that's good that, that, that no one will see my 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 pool. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's totally private. That's that's 100% private. Um, so this is a little of what the user interface looks like. As you can see, most people are testing two or three options at a time. Uh, you'll note here, this is four options. You can actually test up to eight different concepts simultaneously. And you can put in whatever you want. You can put in text, you can put in photos, you can put in video, you can put in audio files. So pretty much anything you want, you can you can get feedback on on PicFu. But this is again, like I said earlier, this is where the magic happens. So PicFu is more than just people voting. The detailed feedback is what I think is really valuable. When I'm running a test, I don't even care so much that option B is the winner. I don't really care so much which one won. I want to understand why that specific thing won and what can I learn from the feedback to go and make this infographic or this main image even better. So with uh, with that being said, let's jump in. I think we're doing okay on time. These are the most common tests that we see. So basically what I'll say is it doesn't matter where you are at your launch process. 
we can get started and people do get started at every point. So early on, what we call is initial USP concepting. So this is like getting feedback on the early elements of your brand and products. Um, we'll go through examples of each of these. Um, another really big one is pre-creative direction. So this is like getting insights before, let's say you would go into a lifestyle photography shoot. Um, is that someone, someone join on? Okay, cool. So um, this was actually from a case study that we did with Kevin King. This is his product. And so like before the, we had different agencies competing on making a really good listing for Kevin King. And so what one of the agencies did is before going into the lifestyle shoot, they went and found three different stock images showing people using hand sanitizer because the product was hand sanitizer. And so they actually tested stock photos in advance to see which, uh, which type of image people preferred. And then what they did is they said, okay, people want to see pulling the hand sanitizer out of the purse. Let's go and recreate that, but make it look even better. And so you'll notice that the outfit is really well coordinated. The nails look really good. Um, I'm going to go through some examples. Like if you're, if you're early on in your selling process, we got uh, which, you know, you can try to, let's say you're trying to launch this supplement brand. You can say, okay, which, which name do you prefer? Do you like get up labs or do you like Vim labs? Um, another example here, it's like, let's say you've decided on, okay, I know what my brand name that I want to be is, but how do you decide between a logo? And so what's very interesting about this test is that both of these logos are for a natural line of wood furniture. But the reason option A was the winner is because the icon here was very clear. It's got this tree. Uh, it's got the really nice, uh, elegant looking font. And so versus this, it's a little bit unclear. Is this a house? Is this a bed? Um, and so this is what's really helpful, right? If you're going to go and you're, if you've ever gone through the trademark process, maybe you're going through it right now, you know, it's pretty expensive. It takes a long time to get approved. And then once you're approved, you're probably not going to trade, change your trademark for quite a while. And so this is something that for just a few bucks running a pick through test, it's really helpful to get that feedback and make sure you're not putting out something that people aren't going to like. Um, this is another really relevant point to new sellers uh, and that's product design. So you can use pick through to get feedback on different elements of your product design. So imagine I've gone on helium 10, I've done my keyword research and I've found out that this breakfast and bed tray is a really hot seller. But how would you know, should I sell it in the dark wood grain or should I sell it in the light wood grain? Right? This would be something that would be pretty big if you got it wrong. Uh, same thing here with this home sweet home sign. This is actually part of a four part test. Uh, and so they're testing different variations of what the sign should actually look like. And at first glance, this looks pretty similar. But what the feedback was is that people wanted to see the flag inside of the heart. This one was a little bit more simplistic. So again, these really nuanced decisions that many of us as business owners might be hard to make independently when you run it through a pick through test, then it really clicks, it makes sense. Um, another big thing that we see is people using it to test which kind of inclusions, what kind of extra bonus items should you include when selling your product. And so this is an example, I've actually got one of these on right now, it's a little webcam cover. Um, people said, hey, this is really valuable to include a webcam cover because it has a functional benefit versus if you're trying to sell these leggings and now I want to add in some fitness resistance bands, some of the feedback we're saying that people don't even buy the leggings to work out. They're actually just wearing these uh, athleisure pants because it looks good. And so they're not even going to use these fitness resistance bands. So before you go ahead and bundle and you order a thousand of these to throw in with your leggings, go and get some feedback as to does my target market even really value this bonus item? Uh, another really good example we've seen is in regards to quantity pricing. So this was actually um, a test that we did before and after COVID. This was for a party supply kit. And we said, hey, which uh, package would you prefer? Which quantity would you prefer for these eco-friendly plates? A 25, 50, 100, or a 300 pack? And when we ran it before COVID, people were saying they wanted a 100 pack. But now we're seeing people are looking for actually a 25 pack or a 14 pack. And so that's really important. I had a, a client that I used to know. Um, and she went and sold basically a 100 pack when she should have been selling a 25 and had to completely pull out her inventory, repack it and ship it in uh, because she totally got the quantity wrong. She knew that this product was a hot seller. Her product research was right. But what the product research didn't tell her is what quantity people wanted to buy. Um, so what I recommend, product design is probably one of the most important things you want to get right from the beginning because it's very hard to change your product. You're going to have to sell through that inventory before you can make changes. And so what I recommend is 
go through and see what different changes could you make visually or from a functionality standpoint about your zipper, your material, your thread, your strap, your handle, and run it through PickFu and see what do people prefer, right? Before I'd start selling this podcasting mic, I would try to go and figure out, okay, like what's the color that it should be? What color should the stand be? And I really want to make sure this is right before launching the product. Um, okay, product packaging is another really big one. Probably some of our most impactful case studies have come from product packaging. And the reason why is because when your product is on a digital shelf, uh, people can have really big preferences towards small changes. So the only difference between this product packaging and this product packaging is that this one is a darker color. But people really, really prefer this. It stands out. It's much more bold. Um, same thing too with this. This is a, a very interesting case study because if I were to look at this and let's say my creative team were to send me these three versions of the packaging for this immune support supplement, I'd say these all look really good. So how would I decide? The interesting thing is that the feedback for these came back and people, rather than they didn't want to see the blocks, they wanted to see a list format. But the reason option A was the overall winner is because when people were buying this product, they knew what an immune support supplement does. They know it's supposed to help you get over a cold faster or stay healthy. And so they weren't looking to see these different things. They were actually looking to see, does this immune support supplement include zinc? Does it include vitamin C? And they actually wanted to see the most important thing they wanted to see was the list of ingredients that they were expecting. So they could say, yep, that's got what I want to see. Let me go and add it to my cart. Um, copywriting as well is something that we see a lot of applications of. Um, generally, what we try to steer people towards are what we call the leading words. So again, your product research tools, they might tell you what words should be included in your uh, bullet points. But uh, the first few words, if people are just going to skim through the first few words, it should get a, give a really good indication of what the rest of that bullet point is going to be about. Um, you can also do this with titles, like trying to see, hey, should I include my brand name? Or what can I do to make the title more clear if you're just reading it quickly? What I try to recommend and what I do with my creative teams is I say, hey, to my copywriting team, make me one version of the product packaging that's informative. Make me another version that's humorous. Same thing with the description. Same thing with the A+. And I run them through pick through and I see, hey, what tone, what style do people prefer? So this is the last section here, and it's all about images. Uh, the biggest testing example we see are people using PicFu to test their main image. And when I first started selling on Amazon, this image would work fine. This is for reusable, eco-friendly grocery bags. But now if you compare it to this, right, there's no comparison. This is not only visually impressive, it's not only showing you how many are included, but it's giving you a very good scale for what size produce it can hold at this bag here can hold coffee beans and they're not going to spill out. Uh, this is a great example as well, because this is for an apple peeler. When we run it through PicFu, we've got the product on a white background versus showing the product in use. We've got these really bright apples here. This is just going to destroy every time. And so this is really helpful if you're trying to increase your CTR, your click-through rate. Um, you can make really beneficial um, main image optimizations. I think this is the last example here. Yeah. So Again, this is using PicFu to optimize your infographics. What I try to recommend doing is like, think about what infographic is going to best communicate the features of your product in a really succinct and compact way. And so what's interesting about this example is both of these are trying to do the exact same thing. They're trying to overcome a really common objection that happens with Bluetooth headphones. Like how easy are these things going to be to pair? And so what's very interesting is again, both of these graphics are trying to do the exact same thing. But this one is much more simplistic. It shows some hands for a size reference. It shows that in order to pair it, you have to pull them out of the case. It shows you the Bluetooth pairing menu, right? And so this can really help to overcome the objections. And this is where we see increases in conversion rate. Um, just another quick reminder that this is a, a, a three-way test. Um, you're testing three different options at the same time. Remember, you can test up to eight options at the same time. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. Um, I will say, this is from earlier, don't take my word for it. If you're sitting there and you're thinking like, hey, does PicFu actually work? The answer is yes, it does work. There's this company you might have heard of called Thrasio. Everyone uh, who decides to sell the company, they should know for Thrasio. <laughs> they should definitely know. So yeah, they're, I mean, these guys are doing really well. They, the fastest profitable company to reach a billion dollar valuation. 
They're um, buying, yeah, they're buying companies from, yeah. Yeah. They're, and they're then selling that. They are amazing. They are a, a huge company, yeah. Just massive. And yeah. so they've been using ClickFu for many years. We did a really great case study with them. They acquired this brand, Angry Orange, for $2 million. They did a bunch of ClickFu testing and ended up on this product packaging after a bunch of testing and pretty much overnight grew that brand from 2 to $20 million. And so we've got a really good video on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. This is John. He's the VP of Creative and Brand Strategy at Thrasio. And he says, for more than two years, they've used ClickFu basically on every major creative change. So like I said, don't take my word for it. These guys are using it. They're a billion dollar company. They're doing quite well. Um, and that's the code. If anyone would like to use PickFu, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Uh, use that and you'll get 50% off your first poll. That's so everything you have, you, also, you have also some tutorials on YouTube channel of uh, PickFu, like how yeah. to use it and some testings, yeah? Yep. Yeah, you can find some content on our YouTube channel. And we also have a really good customer success team. So if you want, you can book a call. Uh, it's katie at pickthrough.com. I'll drop it in the chat. And she just works all day with onboarding new customers, helping you set up your poll questions, all sorts of stuff like that. I'll drop it here. That's amazing. Guys, if you have any question, just type in the comment or you can also do a mic open your microphone and ask a question. I will ask you like this. Uh, how do you vet for these people who are uh, giving us a feedback? How do you choose yes. them? Yeah, so the people apply to get on the panel. And then once they're on the panel, they're not really on. We give them a few test assignments. Um, but then as well, we do have a couple features on the website. Um, when you're going through your results, you can click helpful if the answer is really helpful. Those people are actually given a bonus. And then there's not helpful. And so it's like someone didn't give enough detail or it's just not a good response. You can click not helpful. And those people are actually filtered out of the panel and removed. And so we this 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 uh, then they will be replaced with the new uh, feedback or uh, like it's not automatically replaced, okay. but if you send a message into our support team, we can replace the response. If there is more like than three of them who are really not helpful, then yeah, you should reach out to the support and just uh, yeah, and and it rarely rarely happens because we you know like I said we've been training we have a machine learning algorithm that's been mm -hmm. kind of filtering people automatically for almost eight years and it kind of looks at different similarities and responses so it very rarely happens but yeah if if you're ever like hey this I just wasted my money and Picfu is terrible message into us and they can replace the responses but it very rarely happens yeah uh, how many percent of, of these people come from Amazon, how many from, from other sources? Uh, everyone on our panel, it's not really related to Amazon. It's something totally different, but we do have uh, about more than 70% of the people on our panel are Amazon Prime shoppers. That's amazing. That's, I like to hear that. <laughs> uh, and and one, of the, one, of the, one of the most common segments that you can target is you can say, hey, I want to show this panel, this poll rather, to uh, only Amazon Prime shoppers. You oh, yes, yes, you have this option. They, you can choose the category of, of audience who wants. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's amazing. And, yeah. and, and we've, got a, we've got a bunch of different categories. We've been building our segments for a long time. So you can say, hey, I want people who are dog owners or I want people who are parents. I want people that make above a certain income or you know we even added recently uh, streaming services so like if people are subscribed to netflix or hulu or different things like so that you have like, a, a like a filter for also like similar to amazon categories like i want to for sport and outdoor category people who are uh, to give me feedback do you also split them like this or uh, your your mic you, you, you mean like uh, sports and outdoors yeah 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 do you do you also like split them by similar to Amazon categories? We don't split them by Amazon categories yet, but if you wanted to target sports and outdoors, we do have similar categories to that. So yeah. you might choose like exercise frequency, or you might say like yeah. is into hunting or something like that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, and most. Favorite question, I believe, of my students will be how efficient to be with small budget because you know that the budget is important for us, and every every saved dollar is important to everyone, especially when you do a fifty percent discount for us. So, how to be efficient with uh, with the first pool, first pool? Yeah, really important here, and I, I'm glad you asked. It's very easy when you're running a poll 
it starts out with a minimum of 50 respondents and it's just to a general audience show, showing anyone on our panel. And those start at $1 per response. So it's going to cost $50 per response. So if you use your 50% off, it'll cost 25. With that being said, you can add on as you add on a bigger size poll. So you could test up to 500 people at a time as you add on different audience targeting, it's going to get a little bit more expensive. And so what I recommend doing is like on your first few polls, don't go and get the largest poll size and don't go and add on all these audience targeting. Keep it cheap early on and do more polls, do a higher volume of polls. Like rather than spending $200 on a poll, run four polls for $50 each. And then when you kind of solidify your concepts, like if you're starting at product packaging, do the cheap polls in the beginning. And then when you say, hey, this product packaging I know is good, that's when you spend a little bit more money. And we recommend that even to our big clients. Like we don't have any interest in you just spending a lot of money. It's better to run more polls at a lower budget. Yeah, of course. Uh, so first poll will be always like choosing the main image. If your click-through rate is really low, but when you increase your click-through rate with a big full, after you decide for uh, the rest of the images or content. Uh, I was really curious for these bullet points that you can even uh, make a pool for this and then people can vet which one they it's more sellable. Because I didn't saw this on the last presentation you did. Maybe maybe I, I missed this information, but it's it's really important for me to see which one is more convenient for buyers when they read our text, which one makes them buy. You know, that's, that's, that's amazing. So as, 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 as more pool you do, more narrow you go, more efficient results you get from, from, from Pickford. It's amazing, yeah. And yeah, and one of the things that we added on recently was we have a, a question builder. So you can actually go and see different types of questions and get some advice as if you're testing copy or images or uh, video, it has like a drop down and it really helps a lot. And I yeah, just that's, wanna... that's even if you don't know English really well, it's it's give you a suggestion which which type of questions you can ask. You know, it's uh, it, yeah, we got, I saw it. I saw it on presentation. I saw it on my account. It's amazing. So guys, uh, Anthony. Thank you for, for your time. Uh, thank you for, for reaching us out. Sounds good to me. I think we'll have to do another collaboration and thanks so much for having me. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye.